Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 346. Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight, hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Hymn number 346. The scriptural will be given by David from Florida. John, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, thee, ye must be born again. Romans, ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, 
all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 118. Holy Spirit, light divine, shine upon this heart of mine. Kindle every high desire, cleanse my thought in thy pure fire. Hymn number 118. Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church, Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. 
And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And it will also be available on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. And that Sunday school has its own teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world can attend just by dialing that number. So if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, please call us. We'll be happy to give you the number and would love to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15. You can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved, literally, through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers for all of our services. As many of you know, we had a really good Bible study yesterday. So the next Bible study session will be in two weeks. That'll be Saturday, February 20. So check our website for the study questions and please join us in two weeks at 10 a.m. Saturday, February 20. We have several websites in several different languages to spread the word of God. And we have articles, books, hymns, um, lots of really good stuff to study. And one of the articles that uh, I want to point out that's featured on our English website is uh, an article by Edward Kimball entitled, God's Law is the Law of Perfection. Short, very sweet, and very instructive. God's Law is the Law of Perfection by Edward A. Kimball. And we've been busy printing and mailing again this week. Our latest edition of Forum Highlights has been printed and mailed to subscribers. And it's also available on our website. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony from miscellaneous writings, which attest to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Karen from California. Page 452. Chicago, March 19, 1894. Reverend Mary B.G. Eddy, Boston, Mass. I wish to thank you for the true light that was revealed to me by reading your book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, and at once adopting its teaching. It was one year ago today that I put on the armor, determined never to surrender to the enemy. And you may know I have looked forward to this day with a great deal of pleasure to show my friends that the Lord is constantly with me to help overcome all evil. Some said, when I first started in this new path, wait until you get one of your stomach attacks and you will change your mind. For months, they have waited and are beginning to see the truth in my actions that speak for themselves and show that all is mind. For nearly 30 years, I had been a sufferer from throat and stomach troubles, bronchitis, dyspepsia, gastralgia, and gastritis, etc., were the terms applied by my physicians. About 18 years of that time, I was engaged in the drug business, had constant opportunities for consulting the best physicians, and took such medicine as I felt assured would cure me, but only to be disappointed each time. The last few years, I had been living on oatmeal crackers and hot water, suffering more or less all the time, and could not eat anything else without suffering intense pain. I felt as though I could not live many months more and was getting ready to give up the fight when a dear friend and neighbor, Mrs. Corning, left a copy of Science and Health at our home. 
At first, I did not care to read it, having been educated for many years in the belief that medicine can cure all diseases. I could not conceive of anything else to cure the sick. One Sunday, I had the curiosity to know something about this Christian science and read Science and Health. The more I read, the more interested I became and finally said to myself, I will try it. I took a large porous plaster and four thicknesses of flannel off my stomach and threw them in the corner, saying, Now it shall be mind over matter, no more matter over mind. I filled a large basket full of bottles containing medicine and put it in the shed where all medicine should be. From that day, I have eaten up everything on the table and all I wished. Coffee was my worst enemy, and I had not tasted it for years without suffering untold agony. Several days passed before I cared to drink it. Then one morning I told my family I would commence to use it. I did, and have used it every day since and don't know that I have a stomach, as it never has caused me any trouble since that morning. I am happy to say I have not used a drop of any kind of medicine internally or externally from that day, and I know that all is mine. I read the Bible and Science and Health nearly every day, thanking the Lord for the years of suffering which have led me to the truth as taught by our Savior, for I feel it was only through his victory over the suffering that the truth could have been revealed in my case. I have had some demonstrations to make over error, but each time it becomes easier. God is ever-present and ready to help me, and I trust in him. My faith is planted on a rock that is immovable. Yours truly, Frank S. Eberhardt. P.S. If you think this letter or any part of it will help someone out of darkness into the light of truth, you are at liberty to publish it. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 12 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Spirit. The Golden Text, Zechariah. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. The responsive reading is from 1 Corinthians and Galatians. As it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. This I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. But But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, joy, peace, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Carol will now read. 
I will read from the Bible. Psalms. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. 1 Corinthians For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Mark And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Luke And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. Matthew Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. John, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Second Corinthians, and such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, 
but the Spirit giveth life. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Romans There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Fairly from Maryland will now read. Science and health. Spirit is the only substance, the invisible and indivisible infinite God. Things spiritual and eternal are substantial. Things material and temporal are insubstantial. Spirit is immortal truth. Spirit is the real and eternal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Man is tributary to God, spirit, and to nothing else. God's being is infinity, freedom, harmony, and boundless bliss. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Like the archpriests of yore, man is free to enter into the holiest, the realm of God. Material sense never helps mortals to understand spirit, God. Through spiritual sense only, man comprehends and loves deity. 
Spirit imparts the understanding which uplifts consciousness and leads into all truth. Spiritual sense is the discernment of spiritual good. Understanding is the line of demarcation between the real and unreal. Spiritual understanding unfolds mind, life, truth, and love, and demonstrates the divine sense, giving the spiritual proof of the universe in Christian science. This understanding is not intellectual, is not the result of scholarly attainments. It is the reality of all things brought to light. Jesus' spiritual origin and his demonstration of divine principle richly endowed him and entitled him to sonship in science. The opposite and false views of the people hid from their sense Christ's sonship with God. They could not discern his spiritual existence. Their carnal minds were at enmity with it. Their thoughts were filled with mortal error instead of with God's spiritual idea as presented by Christ Jesus. The likeness of God we lose sight of through sin which beclouds the spiritual sense of truth. And we realize this likeness only when we subdue sin and prove man's heritage, the liberty of the sons of God. Jesus' spiritual origin and understanding enabled him to demonstrate the facts of being, to prove irrefutably how spiritual truth destroys material error, heals sickness, and overcomes death. Wearing in part a human form, that is, as it seemed to mortal view, being conceived by a human mother, Jesus was the mediator between spirit and the flesh, between truth and error, explaining and demonstrating the way of divine science, he became the way of salvation to all who accepted his word. The ancient Christians were healers. Why has this element of Christianity been lost? Because our systems of religion are governed more or less by our systems of medicine. The first idolatry was faith in matter. The schools have rendered faith in drugs the fashion rather than faith in deity. By trusting matter to destroy its own discord, health and harmony have been sacrificed. Such systems are barren of the vitality of spiritual power by which material sense is made the servant of science and religion becomes Christ-like. The more material the belief, the more obvious its error, until divine spirit, supreme in its domain, dominates all matter, and man is found in the likeness of spirit, his original being. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Human belief or knowledge gained from the so-called material senses, would, by fair logic, annihilate man, along with the dissolving elements of clay. The scientifically Christian explanations of the nature and origin of man destroy all material sense with immortal testimony. This immortal testimony ushers in the spiritual sense of being, which can be obtained in no other way. If spiritual sense always guided men, there would grow out of ecstatic moments a higher experience and a better life with more devout self-abnegation and purity. If we are sensibly with the body, 
and regard omnipotence as a corporeal, material person whose ear we would gain. We are not absent from the body and present with the Lord in the demonstration of spirit. We cannot serve two masters. To be present with the Lord is to have not mere emotional ecstasy or faith, but the actual demonstration and understanding of life as revealed in Christian science. To be with the Lord is to be in obedience to the law of God, to be absolutely governed by divine love, by spirit, not by matter. Love will finally mark the hour of harmony. And spiritualization will follow, for love is spirit. Before error is wholly destroyed, there will be interruptions of the general material routine. Earth will become dreary and desolate, but summer and winter, seed time and harvest, though in changed forms, will continue unto the end until the final spiritualization of all things. The darkest hour precedes the dawn. Become conscious for a single moment that life and intelligence are purely spiritual, neither in nor of matter, and the body will then utter no complaints. If suffering from a belief in sickness, you will find yourself suddenly well. Sorrow is turned into joy when the body is controlled by spiritual life, truth, and love. Hence the hope of the promise Jesus bestows. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, because I go unto my Father. Because the ego is absent from the body and present with truth and love. The Lord's prayer is the prayer of soul, not of material sense. Entirely separate from the belief and dream of material living is the life divine, revealing spiritual understanding and the consciousness of man's dominion over the whole earth. This understanding casts out error and heals the sick. And with it you can speak as one having authority. Let us all now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 254. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain. Lo, sad and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain, and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith, and breathed in raptured song, with love perfumed. Hymn number 254. Lord, 
strength to my weakness Take me, soul, body, and mind Come, Holy Spirit, I need Let's now sing hymn number 119. Holy Spirit, source of gladness, come with all thy radiance bright. Lift all burdens and all sadness, or thy children shed thy light. Hymn number 119.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen.